Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. This time, every lantern ring explained. At some point or the other, every comic book character who has lived on the pages of Marvel or DC has encountered a cosmic being whose influences inadvertently shaped their respective universes. We comic book fans know that power never comes without a cost, and it is a concept that Marvel explicitly addressed with their stories. Just look at Donny Cates' recent run with Venom and Thor. DC, on the other hand, prefers to take the subtler approach, and it has resulted in the creation of a far more intriguing pantheon of entities and energies that have only grown in popularity with comic book fans in recent years. When Green Lantern debuted in 1940, we weren't sure how his powers worked. In 2022, we have a Lantern core representing every major sentient emotion, and each one of them is as important as the other. These cosmic forces have technically existed since the beginning of the universe, but it wasn't until Hal Jordan came into the picture that we discovered the existence of lantern rings representing emotions beyond fear and sheer willpower. Let's take a look at all of them in detail. Here's every lantern ring explained. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The ring, it chose you. Take it. How it all started. Like most things in the universe, it all started when there was nothing. Then, life sprang forth into the virgin universe and blinded it with its brightness for close to 700 years before the darkness fought back. Their clash is what led to the development of the emotional electromagnetic spectrum, which represents every major emotion that can be expressed by sentient beings across the universe. Each emotion was also represented by ethereal beings who served as their very embodiment. Given the fact that they were born from the white light that created life, every emotion and its attached entity is shaded in a hue from the VIBGYOR spectrum. The Malchusians, being the first species of intelligent life to ever exist, were able to harness the powers of the emotional spectrum with relative ease, but decided to forego doing so. Their highly advanced evolutionary status made the pursuit of rationality, intellect, and cold hard logic their priority. Kroner, one of their leading scientists, was assigned the keeper of the emotional entities and as such could harness all their abilities at the same time. However, his unquenchable thirst for knowledge led him to break sacred Malthusian laws. We saw him banished and cursed to roam the universe as pure energy for eternity. Over the course of the coming eons, the Malthusians would try to protect the universe from a Krona level threat to the best of their abilities, but ended up failing when their Manhunter androids turned rogue. Following the Great Diaspora, which took place after the conflict with the Manhunters was resolved, offshoots of the Malthusian race settled on various planets and developed their own unique cultures and purposes. One such offshoot landed on the planet Oa, the center of the universe, and resolved to create an intergalactic force that would protect the cosmos from any beings threatening to unravel it, while ensuring they never wielded power that could one day become destructive. Now they call themselves the Guardians of the Universe. These Owens created the central power battery in an effort to harness the unswayable power of will and established the Green Lantern Corps as the physical manifestation of their universal purpose. Over the years, several other Lantern Corps have cropped up in fulfillment of the Blackest Night prophecy, but the Green Lanterns were the first to make the power of an emotion their own, and they used this power to protect the people of their assigned space sectors, the sacred duty of every Lantern that is reaffirmed by their oath of service. Green Lantern Ring – Will Power In brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's Light. Beware my power, Green Lantern's Light. Hal Jordan's Oath of Service might not be the original, but is certainly the most iconic Lantern Oath in DC history. Other Green Lanterns often come up with variations of the same saying, Rotlop Fan's Oath warns his enemies of his own might, while Jack T. Chance's version ends with an actual yowza, but the crux of their message remains the same. Wielding what has been called the greatest weapon ever conceived, each member of the Green Lantern Corps puts their lives on the line, fighting evil across the universe with sheer willpower. A green power ring is only as strong as its user's willpower, 
which is why lanterns vary in terms of their power levels and the abilities they can use. Regardless of that, it cannot be denied the Green Lantern Power Ring is one of the strongest and most flexible weapons in the DC universe. By channeling their inner willpower, Green Lantern Corps members can control fundamental forces like gravity, heat, etc., and essentially become conduits for the bright green energy of will. Depending on their own resolve, this allows them to perform a variety of superhuman feats. All right, you want to dance? Let's dance! Green Lanterns can manipulate the green energy of willpower to create highly durable and flexible light constructs that can take the shape of the user's imagination. For instance, Kyle Rayner was an artist, so his constructs always came out more fanciful, while Jon Stewart's construct appeared mechanical thanks to his background as an architect. These constructs pack enough force and strength to lift 100 tons like a piece of paper. They can fire willpower-laced blasts of Owen energy with enough impact to stagger even Superman. Cal Rayner could also transform his energy blasts into artificial kryptonite, which can't be good news for Clark. The ring creates force fields that allow a Green Lantern to traverse through the vacuum of space with relative ease, forming wormholes to negate short-distance travel while giving them the power to fly at 99% of the speed of light. Green Lanterns can also phase through material and even bend light to their will and conceal parts of themselves via invisibility. The Green Power Ring is equipped with a host of investigative and analytic abilities that allow the Lanterns to protect their space sectors with utmost efficiency. The Ring can conduct accurate electromagnetic scans of large areas, functions as a universal translator and databank, and can even perform environmental feedback to give their user a direct view of the incident they're investigating. In case a lantern is backed into a corner, the ring dispatches emergency and homing beacons to other members of the core, providing crucial aid and relief. Coded to their user's DNA, a green power ring can never be used by someone else unless explicitly granted permission to do so. Where'd my creepy crawly get to? Additionally, lanterns can pre-program their rings to capture their targets after taking the ring off. Green power rings can create duplicates of themselves, absorb energy blasts from hostiles, and can also create a twin of their user out of pure energy. Certain limitations of the powers have been removed over the years, thanks to years of retconning and the Sinestro Core War. For example, initially, power rings were ineffective against the color yellow. It was later revealed that the yellow impurity of a green power ring represents the ring bearer's fears, which a lantern must overcome to affect yellow objects. Initially, a lantern ring had to be recharged once every planetary axial rotation, aka 24 hours for us Earthlings, but that has been changed to a need-to-recharge basis. But the biggest and perhaps most defining change to the abilities of the Green Power Ring is the removal of the Lethal Force Prohibition, allowing lethal actions to be taken against the appropriate target, an act the Guardians had prohibited until Thal nearly annihilated them all. Keeping all that in mind, it's no wonder that the Green Lantern Power Ring is regarded as the strongest weapon in the DC Universe and amongst the various Lantern Corps. After all, they serve as the foundational inspiration for all other Power Rings. But you still betrayed the Green Lanterns, hurt your allies. How could you ever forgive yourself? Red Lantern Ring Rage One of the most dangerous Lantern Corps in the universe harnesses the power of an emotion so unstable it literally corrupts other emotions. Atrocitus used to be a relatively normal Ismulsion before the Manhunter led genocide of Space Sector 666. In its aftermath, he transformed into a rage filled, vengeance driven tyrant who sought bloody revenge against the Guardians. For their cooperation with the Green Lantern, Abin Sir, Atrocitus pummeled the five inversions to death, christening his Red Lantern power battery with the man who gave Sir the Blackest Night prophecy, his old friend Quill. Armed with a Red Lantern ring that he fashioned from his fallen comrades' crystallized blood, Atrocitus uttered the words that would become the Red Lantern Corps' oath, with blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead. Together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. Souls with darkest dread, and twist your minds to pain and hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. The Red Lantern Ring is one of the most unique power rings in existence. 
In fact, it's the first to actually create a physical change in its bearer. Most lantern rings give the users the ability to change their appearances, but the power of rage is so strong that it actually triggers a biophysical transformation in some beings, giving them unique abilities of their own. Moreover, a red lantern ring replaces the heart of its ring bearer, so taking it off is potentially fatal to any red lantern as it could, theoretically, kill them. If they can overcome those two things, however, then a red lantern is an unstoppable berserker on the battlefield whose rage will influence your emotions and whose attacks will be more damaging than you might first realize. Since it effectively becomes the heart of the ring bearer, the red power ring pumps their veins full with the light of rage. This transforms their blood into a lethal poison-like liquid agent whose impact is comparable to napalm strikes. When a red lantern spews this blood vomit on a member of any other lantern core, it corrupts their rings and starts draining their energies rapidly. It can set anything on fire anywhere, even in space. When a Red Lantern consumes the blood of their peers, they gain their abilities, which is how Dex Star started using constructs. The Red Power Ring provides much of the same abilities to its user as a Green Power Ring. Fundamental force manipulation, energy manipulation, flight, etc. Though it lacks the surveillance-based abilities that a Green Lantern has access to. Red Lanterns also often have difficulty forming light constructs because of their uncontrollable rage, which devolves them into mindless instruments of violence and bloodshed. Part of this was designed by Atrocitus, as he kept his lanterns that way for a while. In fact, initially, he was the only Red Lantern who could make light constructs. Eventually, this ability was extended to most of his inner circle as he gave them back their ability to think for themselves to serve the core better. This combination of cold logic and boiling hot rage is what makes the Red Lantern Corps such a destructive force that the only way to keep them in check is with hope or love. Thieves! You stole my shiny, and now you're gonna pay with your life. Orange Lantern Ring. Greed. What's mine is mine, and mine and mine, and mine and mine, and mine, not yours. The most accurate Lantern Oath we've seen till date ironically belongs to the Lantern Corps representing the vile emotion of avarice. Countless millennia ago, a group of five thieves tried to make away with the Parallax entity from Oa and arrived at the planet Okara in the Vega system. There, they encountered a mysterious orange lantern power battery and fought to death over its possession. Meanwhile, the Owens had located them and managed to recover Parallax by striking a deal with the Victor. The Guardians would leave the Vega system and his newfound powers untouched in exchange for the entity. And that is how La Fleas, the only orange lantern in existence, came to harness the power of Ophidian for himself. Though there are scores of orange power rings in existence, La Fleas isn't exactly a keen sharer and greedily hoards them for himself. There can only be one Agent Orange. Just ask Lex Luthor. In fact, the members of the Orange Lantern Corps are nothing but light constructs of the people La Fleas has killed and assimilated into the light over countless millennia. The orange power ring functions much like any other power ring with its base abilities, fundamental force manipulation, energy construction, flight, and everything else that distinguishes a person as a member of a lantern core. What makes it so unique is that just like the emotion it represents, the orange power ring is full of greed. It can be charged up to 100,000%. Yes, you heard us right, 100,000% which allows La Fleece to easily solo both Green Lanterns and the Guardians at the same time. Moreover, an orange power ring doesn't just absorb energy. It can absorb entire constructs made by other Lantern Corps members or even the Guardians of the Universe and doesn't differentiate between energy and magic when absorbing the same. Ergo, going head-to-head -head with La Fleece without a plan is a straight-up death wish. He can summon an entire army of lantern constructs in an instant and overwhelm you with his forces or just concentrate the energy and do it all by himself. It would make him a highly efficient one-man army if he wasn't so damn greedy. The orange power ring infects its user's mind with greed to the extent it becomes a bottomless well, where the ring bearer can only think about his personal gain over everything else. It also leaves them in a perpetual state of hunger. Only the light of hope or love can even hope to sustain the orange light of avarice, as willpower and fear seems to be useless against it. Otherwise, if La Fleas doesn't have all his constructs around him, he might be in serious trouble. A new sun rising. Yellow Lantern Ring Fear When a green power ring selects a new candidate, it puts them through a test. The newly selected lantern must prove their worth by displaying the strength of their will and overcoming their greatest fears. Conversely, the Sinestro Corps gives you membership based on your ability to instill great fear. 
Thal Sinestro used to be the greatest Green Lantern who ever lived, until the power of his ring warped his mind and made him believe that fear alone could bring true order to the universe. So, when he was banished to Quad in the Antimatter universe, he created a power ring from the only true weakness of a Green Lantern, the yellow impurity known as fear. Armed with his yellow power ring and battery, Sinestro uttered an inverted version of his former oath as an affirmation of his twisted purpose. In blackest day, in brightest night, beware your fears made into light. Let those who try to stop what's right burn like my power, Sinestro's might. And just like that, fear didn't just have a face, it had an entire lantern core dedicated to spreading its name. The powers of a yellow lantern ring are exactly the same as a green lantern ring, including the surveillance abilities as both core are ultimately trying to bring order to the universe, albeit through dramatically different means. Ah! What makes the yellow power ring so unique is its ability to instill and amplify its targets' innate fears. Thal Sinestro had one of the strongest wills in the universe because he had a deep understanding of people's fears. Every Sinestro Core member can sniff out what their opponent fears by delving into their minds. They can then simply recreate those fears via light constructs and turn their enemies' battle cries into screams of terror. Fun fact, Batman was once offered a yellow lantern ring because of his innate understanding of fear as well, but he never joined the core. The only thing fear is weak to is hope, and in the DC universe, hope is always on short supply, making the yellow power ring one of the strongest variations in existence. Black Lantern Ring – Death the blackest night falls from the skies, the darkness grows as all light dies. We crave your hearts and your demise. By my black hand, the dead shall rise. Technically more of a state of existence than a particular emotion. Death, aka Necron, is what occupied the universe before life burst forth, and has been lying down the path to reclaim its kingdom from life ever since. That's what the Blackest Night prophecy was about, the premonition that all life will die when Necron surfaces to the realm of the living and attempts to reclaim it. After he was defeated, the Anti-Monitor's dying existence crash landed on Riot in Space Sector 666, where it was transformed into the Black Lantern's central power battery. Scar, the disgraced Guardian, fashioned the first Black Lantern ring from dark matter and sent it along to the Herald of the Night, William Hand, who went on to become Black Hand, the very first Black Lantern. As the Blackest Night event continued to unfold, millions of Black Lantern rings were sent all across the universe in an effort to unleash Necron, and after taking a look at their powers, it isn't hard for us to imagine why that succeeded. A Black Lantern power ring possesses most of the same powers as a green power ring. Energy projection, flight, constructs, etc. Except the obvious difference, they can only be wielded by the dead. A black power ring commands its chosen wielder to rise, reanimating them with all their thoughts, powers, and experiences, but leaving their souls out so they become weapons of pure malice. It also regenerates their body parts, making them appear almost alive. The black power ring can seemingly tell who has already died once and been revived, and can control those beings as well by making its bearers say die in their presence. The main purpose of this ring, however, is to accumulate enough emotion-filled hearts to summon Necron to the living dimension. Black Lanterns can ascertain whom to kill by reading their target's emotions and removing their hearts to add on to Necron's emergence meter. Oddly enough, a black power ring also lets the user channel all other emotional spectrum energies except hope, as shown by Superboy Prime. At the same time, the white light of life will render this ring useless, as will time travel or a being truly devoid of, in control of, emotions like Scarecrow. Still, it's a convenient weapon that proved its worth in the recent Death Metal series by saving the entire universe. Thanks, Batman. I am Saint Walker, and I believe I am the first Blue Lantern in the universe. Thanks for the power boost. Blue Lantern Ring. Hope. The newest Lantern Core on the block also happens to be the strongest one around, at least in theory. Created by the outcast guardians Ganthet and Sade after they realized that their former peers' ways would guarantee the universe's destruction, this Lantern Core is capable of harnessing the purest and most powerful emotion from the spectrum, hope. In fearful day, in raging night, with strong hearts full, our souls ignite. When all seems lost in the war of light, look to the stars, for hope burns bright. When all seems lost in the war of light, 
Look to the stars, for hope burns bright. It is this sense of optimism that a blue power ring looks for from its potential ring bearer, and only after they have fully understood and accepted their duties are they inducted into the blue Lantern Corps. Though they function exactly like a green power ring, there are a couple of things that make the blue power ring a rather tricky weapon for battle. For instance, the ring will try to rehabilitate its target first, so the energy constructs a blue lantern creates will initially resemble their target-specific cause for psychosis, and only after dealing with that will it allow normal light constructs to be created. Moreover, the blue power ring can channel and accumulate the hopes of others in its proximity to perform borderline miracles. At full strength, the blue lantern rings can project a person's hopes into life, heal mortal wounds, and even revitalize a dying sun. To achieve this strength, however, they must be working alongside a green lantern as well power and hope are symbiotic in nature and need to work together to achieve their full potential. Without a green power ring in its vicinity, a blue power ring is only good enough for flight and defense. On the other hand, it makes its bearer immune to rage or avarice and can actually reverse the debilitating effects of both emotions on a person, making mastering the blue power ring an absolute necessity. Indigo Lantern Ring Compassion After hearing about the Blackest Night prophecy, Abin Sir traveled the cosmos looking for a way to defeat the coming enemy. He stumbled across an unexpected solution on the enigmatic planet called Nock, whose natives had miraculously found the source of the most elusive component of the emotional spectrum, the indigo light of compassion. Deeming it the power necessary to stop Necron's forces, Abin created the Indigo Tribe Lantern Corps, a force created out of reformed criminals who now wield compassion as their weapon of choice. Indigo tribe members are unique in that they use their power ring and the indigo staff in conjunction, as opposed to just using the ring. And even then, their abilities differ vastly from those of other Lantern Corps. The indigo power ring has the ability to emulate other energies of the emotional spectrum when they are in close proximity and use those energies for their own use. Instead of creating light constructs of their own, though they can still, fire energy projectiles using their staffs. The staff also doubles as their power batteries, recharging their rings whenever needed. Indigo tribe members can fly at tremendously high speeds and can even use wormholes to teleport across various locations. However, their light energy signature is so elusive that they cannot be easily tracked by anyone in the DC universe. Moreover, whenever an indigo tribe member heals someone, they also experience that person's most heinous acts in a premonition and can even impose empathy upon their targets, forcing them to face their crimes and repent. Their unique language hasn't been translated till date, and we don't even know everything about the tribe or the indigo light, making them one of the only remaining and compelling mysteries in DC. Their oath is in the ineligible language of Nok. Tor Lorek San Bonakamur Natromo Fan Tor Nequater Terlantan Kelo Abinsur Tan Leklanok Fumoro Sir. I see I've interrupted something. No, no, Carol, I... Star Sapphire Ring. Love. Love conquers all. See, it's right here in the Star Sapphire Oath of Service. For hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone in blackest night, accept our ring and join our fight. Love conquers all with violet light. Carol, think. The other extremity of the emotional spectrum harnesses the raw, wild power of love from the star sapphire gem found on the home world of the Zamarons. Unlike other Lantern Corps, however, the star sapphires don't enforce initiation, instead allowing prospects to choose whether they want to serve in the War of Light or not. Once they have accepted, however, their duties and powers are almost identical to that of a Green Lantern's. The Star Sapphire Ring gives its bearer the ability to manipulate fundamental forces, creating energy projections and constructs, wormholes, fly, and anything else that you might associate with a Green Lantern Power Ring. What sets it apart from the rest is its ability to crystallize others with the power of love. The power is great enough to crystallize an entire planet in a limited amount of time, leaving its population dangling in suspended animation. The Star Sapphire Ring can also resurrect a person from the dead by using the power of love from their beloved, like when Kyle Rayner was brought back to life by infusing the love between him and Soranic Natu. Being a selfless emotion, love cannot be affected or absorbed by greed, and can, in fact, be lethal to a Red Lantern, as falling in love will make their ring stop working, effectively killing them. All these abilities make the Star Sapphire Core one of the strongest units in the universe. After all, love works best in large numbers. White Power Ring 
Combined power of the seven light-based cores. Life is the basis of all light in the DC universe, so it can only make sense that the white power ring would be the manifestation of the life entity itself. Debuting during the Blackest Night storyline, the white power ring manifested when Thal Sinestro merged with the life entity, becoming the first white lantern during the various lantern cores battle with Necron. From there, the entity possessed Hal Jordan, who went on to create 12 more temporary White Lanterns. But the key word in that sentence is temporary. Once Necron was defeated and the Life Entity was safe, everyone who had been transformed into a White Lantern reverted to their original status quo, and it wasn't until Kyle Rayner mastered the full emotional spectrum that the proper first White Lantern would come into existence. And needless to say, his powers are practically limitless. The White Power Ring holds dominance over the entire emotional spectrum and can generate and use the individual powers of any of them, besides being able to use the standard abilities of a Lantern Power Ring. This makes a White Lantern the most dangerous prospect to face in battle for the simple fact that their only weakness is that they're too strong to beat conventionally. The White Power Ring can defeat the undead with relative ease. As Sinestro took out Black Lantern so casually, he seemed almost like a god. It is also implied that it can recharge itself if its bearer simply enjoys life to the fullest extent. This ring can override the powers of any other ring its bearer previously owned, and is even capable of resurrecting beings from the dead, being a physical manifestation of the life equation and all, though this seems to be contingent on the intensity of the act. While the recent shakeup of the DC continuity has thrown the life equation angle of the white power rings into question, there's no denying that these enigmatic accessories are the ultimate expression of power in the DC universe, and we can't wait to learn more about them. Phantom Ring The Full Emotional Spectrum Crona wasn't the only mad scientist amongst the Malchusians, it would seem. While Raimi's first go at ring making yielded the now iconic Green Lantern power rings, his second would be a disaster that would see him banished from Oa for two billion years. The disaster? A power ring that could be worn by anyone, and granted that person direct access to the full emotional spectrum. Called the Phantom Ring, the idea was that it could be used to deal with Green Lanterns who couldn't overcome the yellow impurity. This ring would have no power battery, instead drawing its strength from the spectrum itself. The Guardians saw the sheer stupidity of exposing a person to the full scope of the emotional spectrum and rightfully banished Raimi from Oa. Sadly, Chekhov's gun must go off once it has been introduced, and go off it did, when Fred Kaminsky stole the ring off the Owen and became the first and thankfully only Phantom Lantern. As the Phantom Lantern, Kaminsky thought he'd fulfilled his destiny, reciting his own Lantern oath in desperate day in hopeless night. The Phantom Ring is our last light. We yearn for power, strength, and might. I seize the ring. That is my right. Little did he know he'd signed a death warrant. The Phantom Power Ring detects the user's current emotion down to the second, and then proceeds to connect them to its corresponding energy wavelength from the emotional spectrum. It sounds cool, but is awfully traumatic for the ring bearer, as assuming the full weight of a single emotional entity can drive you insane, let alone accessing all of them. And if somehow madness doesn't consume you, then the ring itself will. The Phantom Ring doesn't need a power battery because it's hardwired to the emotional spectrum itself, being charged directly by it. It allows the Phantom Lantern to fight without worrying about taxing their energy reserves, but it also basically dooms them to death by explosion, since no physical body can withstand that kind of energy exposure. While the idea of accessing the whole emotional spectrum is awesome on paper, Raimi's dreadful execution makes the Phantom Power Ring one of the most dangerous weapons in existence in all the worst ways. Ring of Volthum Evil Throughout the history of the Power Rings, there have been certain individuals who have been able to create them without the help of any overarching entity. Most famously, Hal Jordan was able to forge a green Power Ring and battery through nothing but his sheer willpower. So, it's fitting that the only other ring to come from a single individual's efforts would result in something that is the exact opposite of a Green Lantern's ring. Volthum was a time traveler from the futuristic Earth-15, who uncovered the secret of the emotional spectrum with his mother, and embarked on a journey through space and time to save his planet from its imminent destruction. Throughout his various adventures, he crossed into multiple multiversal versions of Earth, one of which was Earth-3, where the villainous counterparts of Earth Prime's JLA ran the planet. Here, Volthum encountered the wizard Mordru, who fashioned a power ring from a sliver of Volthum's immortal soul, before he finally ended up with the Malchusians and became the first lantern in existence. 
This ring sought out Abin Sir, who then gave it to Earth-3's Hal Jordan and turned him into the Power Ring. The Ring of Volthoom is an inverted version of the main continuity's Green Lantern Ring in every sense of the word. This ring feeds off its bearer's fear and cowardice, granting them great power instead, which includes most of the standard Power Ring abilities like building light constructs and flying at nearly the speed of light. But the real catch is that the more you use it, the more it eats away at you until nothing but an empty husk is left. The Ring of Volthoom expends its bearer's life force, making them look emaciated and feel intense physical pain upon activation. It's why most of the Power Ring core looks like half zombies. Eventually, its users end up trapped in the Green Realm after they've died, making their lives a living nightmare since they get the Ring. And the worst part? The Ring of Volthoom is a magical object that has the ability to influence and even take over its bearer's conscience, replacing their personality with something far more malevolent. It's much more like Alan Scott's Power Ring, minus the benevolence and heroism. For all intents and purposes, the Ring of Volthoom is the most evil Power Ring in existence. That itself makes it a worthy inclusion on our list. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Accessorize.